Hi, I've clicked on to today's tropical tidbit for Wednesday. Over here in the Atlantic, we have tropical storm Ophelia has developed from Invest 98L over here in the Central Atlantic, and we still have what's left of Invest 99L now passing over the Northern Antilles as a tiny little swirl. And if we zoom in on Ophelia, well, we have a well-defined circulation, but boy, have we seen this before this year. Nothing but this all season long. Another sheared center in here exposed with all the convection off to the east and northeast of the center and it is already feeling the effects of those westerly winds aloft and it is going to probably look like this for the next several days as it marches westward and west northwestward towards the northern Antilles Islands and we'll look you can see 99L is also a little bit of a sheared feature and this is what this is going to look like through its whole journey and eventually it's going to curve out east of the United States up in this direction as far as its short-term path, which is what we're most concerned about here regarding the islands, we've got some of the models have shifted a lot farther north here since yesterday, and the NHC track is now north of the islands. I still think it's going to at least clip the northern islands here and uh, move on like this and eventually curve out perhaps a little sharper like this in here. It depends on, the, on how the trough is oriented, but it's going to curve out in this area and uh, just northeast of the Bahamas and going to curve into that trough. You can see that there's a funnel boundary down here right now and these things are going to remain as this trough is going to be digging into the southeast United States for the next week and this will remain around and you'll see a boundary like this sitting in here waiting to curve this out as soon as it gets north of the Caribbean. And this isn't going to be a huge deal in terms of wind, but what we're really watching for right now is the heavy rain in this area area of the world here, Puerto Rico and the surrounding islands, don't need another storm, weak or not, bringing more rainfall. So we're hoping this passes just north of Puerto Rico like this. But I do think it's going to at least clip the northern leewards, and due to its sheared nature, may not bring Puerto Rico too much, but there's been something about the back side of these things that when they get northwest of Puerto Rico, even if they miss, they start bringing these bands back around the southeast side and brings a lot of heavy rain behind them. So we might have to watch for that even if Ophelia passes just north of Puerto Rico. But I think a track like that is most likely, and then it'll diffuse or weaken or perhaps slightly strengthen in here. It's not really a great environment in here if this does get here, but it will be a weak system throughout its life. May never become a hurricane even in this area. So another basically dud system for the 2011 hurricane season, but it is a storm and it's got a name and we're up to the O now, which is 16, I believe. So we're up to 16. That's the upper end of what my forecast was for this year. And we're probably gonna surpass that because we've had a lot of weird weird 12-hour life-long systems up in this area of the Atlantic that contributed to the number. So we'll see how we end up at the end here. But here is our next worry that we're going to be looking at. This is the European trying to catch on to the idea that I've been talking about having low pressure develop out of the Northwest Caribbean and move northeast. Now this is the time that I I didn't expect the European to latch onto it at day nine here because you can see where the trough is directly north of it over the eastern Great Lakes and all this low pressure over the eastern seaboard. I expected the European to wait until this trough gets offshore here and this high pressure builds in over the east before we saw mischief start showing up on this model for uh, in the northwest Caribbean. But it is starting off early and seeing some of this low pressure down here. The ensembles are also seeing this in the 8 to 10 day period. So the Europeans starting to catch on that there's something going on down there and we're going to have to start watching for it. And I think we're going to continue to have to watch. Once this trough finds a sweet spot offshore, pressures are going to build over the east and we're going to see this low pressure start to incubate down in the Caribbean within the next couple of weeks, probably right during that first week of October. And the reason why is we're probably waiting on the MJO at this point. We've had a couple of opportunities already with the high pressure coming in, but they've been short-lived. What we need is a more long-lived time of the high pressure remaining over the east for a few days, and then we need the MJO to be helping us. Right now, there's a lot of these brown colors indicating downward motion at the initialization for today, and they start to fade away by day five, but it's not until day 10 and 15 that we see all these greens starting to show up, indicating upward motion and rising air in the tropical Atlantic. This supports thunderstorm activity and can be conducive for tropical development, especially in the Caribbean at this time of year. And the reason that this upward motion is shown here is because the GFS is taking the MJO right into octant 8 here by the 10 to 15 day period. And this octant is right over here over the Eastern Pacific and Caribbean areas and supports upward motion in that area of the world. And even the European now, this is the European that's been stuck up here for the last several days and it's been a model fight with them. And remember I said that it may be up here 
but it's more likely that the MJO em ends up in here for October because of the water temperatures globally. And you can see that now the Europeans starting to lean this way. See these tendrils now reaching out towards octant 8 at the end of the cycle here. And the ensemble mean is starting to bend back this way. So we're seeing the Europeans start to get in on this. And once we get the European over into the MJO camp, of getting it over into the Atlantic, then we'll probably really see that model start to latch on to development eventually. So we'll have to see whether we actually wait the full 15 days like the European shows here to get there, or whether we get over here faster like the GFS shows. But either way, the MJO is coming back, and when it does come back, we're probably going to see the Caribbean start lighting up in these time periods here, 10 to 15 days out, we're going to have to watch. And the ensemble means are still showing low pressures in there. And it's enough evidence to think that mischief is going to occur with this pattern that we've been talking about for quite a while now, where the air becomes colder over the eastern United States. We get these troughs coming down now. And once they settle out over the maritime continent, we get the axis out towards 60 to 65 west instead of right over the eastern part of the country. High pressure comes in behind with that cold air. And you get that high pressure up here you start increasing the pressure gradient between areas like North Carolina and then Cuba and you get all this air getting forced down into the Caribbean which can start piling it up and you get low pressure down here that can eventually sneak north and curve out into that trough. So it's a pattern that has stimulated development before. It's happened in the past multiple multiple times. There's no reason to believe that it can't happen again this year especially with an active October that is likely on the horizons after a fairly active Central Atlantic season probably shifting our focus back west now for the end of the season. Ophelia may be one of the last storms that we see out here. We may get one more but she's probably one of the last couple before we start really focusing our attention more into this area of the world for the grand finale of the season. So we'll have to continue to watch this area very closely. Alright, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.